once again, I'm so glad that you are with us today. I've, I, I have, you know, look at my heart and in the thoughts of what we're, you know, where we're at as a country and what is happening. I understand our heart is still uh, hurting because of all the uh, things that have happened, the uh, senseless uh, uh, murder of George Floyd and, and uh, the ongoing uh, racial divide. Let me tell you, God knows how to heal that. And it begins with each of us. And I trust that you're uh, looking in your heart, God, how do I, how, how do I get rid of every, any type of prejudice? It's, it, maybe it's not just in a racial issue. It's uh, prejudging situations, uh, prejudice against people or situations or socioeconomic, what, whatever it may be. Uh, God is not a part of that. And God wants to heal every area. And until uh, we look at it as racism is a sin, uh, uh, you know, we may, we won't get rid of it, but I'm telling you, it's a sin and God wants to heal us of that today. And so, uh, and the coronavirus and all the heaviness in this world, the burdens and, you know, and how to speak to that. And I'm telling you, and I, and I, you know, looked at my heart and I, and I just felt this week, God placed this in my heart. And I, I want to share this, that, um, in these last days, a, kind of a, a dual track understanding here. Jesus is coming soon. I believe he's coming sooner than we could ever imagine. And, and we need to be rapture ready. I, the rapture is going to take place. It, Jesus is, I want to reiterate that. Jesus is coming soon. And we better be ready. And uh, get your house in order. God, God's son is going to split the sky and he is coming soon. And I want to ask you, are you ready? Are, are you ready? Uh, the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. And uh, your life cleansed by his blood and you receive him into your heart. And we're going to talk about all that today in these next few minutes. And so, but, and, but on the other track, within all of that, in these last days, we're going to talk about a little bit of the signs of his coming. But also, I want to remind you what Joel said, the prophet. He says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I believe one of the greatest revivals is coming to the church. I believe there's been being a rebirth within the church. I believe there's been a rebirth in your family. There's a rebirth in my life, your life, a, a renewing a, after the heart of God. And so in these last days, God said, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Yes, it says where sin doth abound, grace, that much more does abound. I, I believe that we're going to see a mighty move of the spirit of God in the church and our communities in these last days. Yes, I know what we see see on the news and around and the hurts that are that have happened is seemingly is insurmountable but God can cause everything and will I believe in ways that will bring revival in these last days Jesus uh, uh, said through Peter the Spirit of God said that he's not slack concerning his promises and that and that he's not not going to come back but he said he's not willing that anybody should perish. Uh, and we have a choice today as a church and as individuals, as a church, to preach the gospel and to love people into the kingdom of God. But we individually have a choice to receive him as our Lord and Savior and as we do and to share that with the world. Because I'm telling you, friends, I, I, and I hope we all feel this, I'm not willing that anybody should go to hell. May we share that gospel today. We all need to be renewed into sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And today I want to share that. One thing I know, I don't know a lot of stuff. I, I've, I, there's a lot of things I don't know and a lot of things I don't understand. But one thing I do know, Jesus is coming soon. Amen? Jesus is coming soon. I, I remember as a boy, my father, and I, I didn't have the plainest speech, and I, and I probably said I still don't uh, get tongue-tied in some of the things that I say, and, and uh, sometimes uh, I don't get it all out grammatically and also my speech, but, uh, and words sometimes run together, and I don't pronounce things correctly. But I remember as a, as a kid, I, I wasn't great talking, uh, um, had a little bit of speech impediment, just a little bit as a boy, and couldn't put things out there properly. And, but my father, as, as a minister of the gospel, uh, when I was five years old or so, he would put me up. I was put in front of people at a very young age, and so it, uh, it's kind of become natural to be God, and I know God was preparing me. But he put me up on the altar, and I, and I would sing a song 
he's coming soon. Now, I would say it in a way that you couldn't really hear soon, but I, I would put the T in front of the S, uh, and he's coming soon. And I, I, just as a little boy, but my dad would put me out there, and I would sing this little song, and I'd say, he's coming soon, he's coming soon with joy. We welcome his returning. It may be morn, it may be night or noon. We know he's coming soon. I also saw as a, as a child and as a teenager in camps, a movie that was put out years ago, an old movie. Um, the movie was called A Thief in the Night. And uh, it's, it, it'll, if you don't know Jesus, it'll scare you. It's all about being left behind. Folks, I don't want to be left behind. I want to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And if you know him as your Lord and Savior, uh, he's going to carry you home. Glory to God. Today's, uh, and that came out, I think, around 2000, uh, the first one, uh, the movie Left Behind, based on uh, Tim LaHaye and Jerry V. Jenkins' book series. And so there's a lot of uh, end times movies that have come out. And um, just a, a, a reminder that Jesus is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. So the reality is... I, I believe everybody is curious about the future, and I know I may be speaking to people that don't know Jesus. I may be speaking to individuals that, that maybe you feel that, well, I, I, I believe this is it. Let me tell you, according to Scripture and according to what I know, this world is not it, because if it was it, we'd have no hope. But we know our hope lives in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and being in His presence and glory for an eternity. But everybody's curious about the end times and about the future. We all want to know what lies ahead the same was true for the early Christians. And I, I want to invite you to turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. And I'll be going to different other places as well. But everyone's curious about the future. And the early church, they were undergoing tremendous persecution by the end of the first century A.D. Many felt abandoned and many felt betrayed and others began to feel hopeless and some even began to ridicule the hope of Christ's return. There were those that believed that they were going to still be alive when he returned. You know, I, I've been hearing this gospel, uh, my, you know, 57 years, and I believe we're closer than ever before to the coming of the Lord. Just because it's not happened yet does not mean it's not going to happen. Uh, God has a plan, and the timing is in God's hands. But um, that first generation was not like our own generation. So the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, and uh, if, uh, if you would, I want to go back to verse number 13. And so I want to read this. It says, brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep, those who have died, or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep or have died in him, the Christian dead. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are still, uh, who are left to the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come from heaven with a loud command, with a voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord, I love this, forever. Therefore, encourage, another translation says, comfort one another with these words. In this particular timing that we are all involved in in this world with everything, not even just what we see in the headlines and what has happened in the world. It's everything. In this particular time, we need comfort. We need direction. We need purpose. We need to understand what God's call is, and that's being ready for the coming of the Lord. He says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. Philippians 3.20, just remind you, this world is not our home. The Bible says, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21 says, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Let me tell you, our bodies are going to be totally renewed. Uh, old things passed away and all things have become new when Jesus comes again. As Christians, we are travelers on a journey through the world. We are on our way to a new home. And in relation to our life's journey and its values and direction, heaven is our destination. I'm not comfortable here. I'm more uncomfortable here than we've ever been. Uh, we know that Jesus is coming soon. 
It is the homeland, heaven, the homeland for which we long. We've been born from above and our names are written in heaven's directory, those that know Jesus. Our lives are guided by heavenly standards and our rights and inheritance are reserved in heaven. If you know Jesus, he's got an inheritance for you. Now, my biblical theology and uh, my worldview began to be formed when I was just a little boy. As I told you, around five years old, I, was, I started singing songs that I probably didn't know everything about. But my theology of the rapture in heaven was formed as a boy hearing the stories of the Bible through my Sunday school teachers and, and the teaching of my parents and hearing my dad's sermons. Oh, I miss hearing my dad's sermons, hearing my dad. And uh, he's already home, and uh, I'm going to see him once again, I believe, soon. I'd hear his sermons, and I, I'd hear him sing some of the songs, and, and I'd hear songs of the church growing up. Now, I, I'm going to date myself because a lot of folks watching right now of a, of a younger generation probably have never heard some of these songs, but that's not going to keep me from, from saying I'm not going to sing them to you. But I, I, I remember songs like, uh, and some of you are going are gonna, to uh, know this right when I say it. I remember songs like, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling home. Let me tell you, I feel like going home today. I, the old song, I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. The old song, when we all get to heaven, uh, the song, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. An old song, I'm getting ready to leave this world. And then some of the newer songs today, a couple of them, uh, well, one in particular, I love the old song, the song that says, I can only imagine. I cannot imagine totally. I read scripture of what it's going to be like, but until I get there, what it will be like, will I dance for you, Jesus? I, and as the song progresses, we, we sing it here. I, I can only imagine, may our incredible uh, spirit-led imagination just arise with us today to imagine what is it going to be like when we stand in the presence of Jesus Christ? Oh, I can't wait. I, I, I can't wait. What's it going to be like when we bow before him and cast our, our uh, hopefully, rewards, our crowns at the feet of Jesus Christ? What's it going to be like when we see others that we've known throughout the years, that loved ones that's passed on, and we can't wait to see them? But the most important thing, when we see Jesus face to face, then I remember a song from a few years back simply says, people get ready, Jesus is coming Soon we'll be going home. Amen. How many is ready to go home? Somebody shout amen. I, I am ready to go home. The rapture of the church is one of the four cardinal doctrines of the assemblies of God. Salvation, Holy Spirit, healing, and rapture. The resurrection of those who have fallen asleep in Christ and their translation together with those who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord is the imminent and blessed hope of the church. That word rapture, it comes from the Latin word raptu, which means caught away or caught up. The Latin word is, is equivalent to the Greek term that is translated in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, where it says caught up. That's the rapture. And that event that we call the rapture is described 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. It basically refers to the time when Christ will take his followers from the earth to meet him in the air and be with him in heaven. It involves only those who are part of Christ's true church, those that have received him as the Lord and Savior. It's not because uh, you're just a member. It's not because that say, well, I love Jesus, or it's not because you've attended a church or your grandparents attended a church. It's because you've asked Jesus personally into your heart. And Jesus taught that he will return to the earth one day. And he was very careful to warn the disciples to be constantly prepared for this, to be on your guard, not just for living in this world, but to be on your guard, ready by the way you live in this world to see Jesus Christ, to be a part of that next eternity forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52, uh, a passage of scripture that we read a lot at the home going, uh, at, at funerals. It says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Aren't you glad we're going to be changed? Aren't you glad the older we get, we probably said, I'm glad my body's going to be changed. It may not feel the same way as when we were kids. Uh, well, it doesn't. Uh, we all, as we get older, we look differently. And uh, uh, some things maybe don't uh, feel as it used to. But I'm telling you, one day we're going to all be changed. And so 
while we're still on this earth, these, there's three things I want to I uh, share with you today, some main points. Why, while we're on this earth, what do we do? How do we prepare ourselves? How do we become rapture ready? You're asking the question, I want to tell you exactly what the answers are. The first thought that I want to share this is, you've got to know the times and seasons. You've got to know what's happening right now. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 says, but know this, hard times will come in the last days. People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, demeaning, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, a reckless, conceited, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness, but denying its power. And that is a revelation of what is happening. Uh, I'm just not talking right now. I'm talking about what is happening in, in the realm of these last days. We believe that. We see the degradation of this world, sinfully speaking, and, and, and the morality has gone to an all-time low. But we know we shouldn't be surprised in the day and time we live in because the Lord has warned us and prophesied in the Scripture that terrible times shall come in these last days. The uh, word translated perilous in the King James Version and hard here in the CSB Version is, is used only here in Matthew 8, 28 in the New Testament. It means hard to bear. It means menacing, fierce, violent, or troublesome. We cannot imagine in this day and time it, uh, things getting worse than they already are. Every new public expression of sinful behavior or blatant unbelief shocks us. An unbelievable increase in immoral behavior and shamelessness and, and rebellion against God will characterize these last days. And many people are even turning away from all biblical moral guidelines. Let me tell you, no matter what people may say, this word of God, it is still real, it is still true, and it is our roadmap, and it is our value system. Not this world, this book, this word of God is our value system. So I, I'm, I'm here to tell you this morning, know the times and seasons. Know what is going on. Know that Jesus is coming again, that uh, this is not by chance where we're at today. This is, this. God's got a plan and Satan is out to destroy. But I know whom I have believed in and I am persuaded that he will keep that that I've committed unto him against that day. And so God is reminding us today that we wonder how much time that is really left on God's timetable, but we know that Jesus is coming soon. Mark's gospel says in Mark 13, 32, that no one knows about that day or hour not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So he says, verse 33, be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away and he leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Verse 35 of Mark says, therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. Verse 36 says, if he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. Verse 37, what I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Come on, don't let the Lord find us sleeping. We've got to be awake. We've got to be awake knowing that, yes, the times and seasons are growing stronger and, 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 and pulling away from the things of God. But God is still the same. We are not defeated. We are victorious. And one day Jesus soon is going to come again. So know the times and seasons. And we know that through the Word. Secondly, you need to know and stand on the Word of God. This is the book. I'm not standing on the media. I'm not standing on the government. I thank God for both. I, I'm not standing on any other system in this world. I am standing on this book. This book is the answer to every problem. This book is the answer to racial divide. This book is the answer to disunity. This book is the answer to every sin that hits in this world. This book is the answer. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but he said, my words will not pass away. 
And so as we await the Lord's return, Jesus says that our hearts do not have to be troubled. I love John 14, 1 and following. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. I don't want to pray that God gets me more comfortable in this world. That's not God's plan. God's not as concerned about our comfort as he is our character because he's preparing us, purifying us, making us ready for the coming of the Lord. We need to stop thinking how how we can just uh, be more comfortable in this world. We need to start looking how I can prepare for the coming of the Lord. That's what we need to be sharing today. He said, these things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Oh, I love it. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. I understand each of us have a different anxiety quotient. Some people believe that when they accept Christ, they will receive a get out of stress free card that, and live a life of uninterrupted bliss and no more problems. But Jesus never offered a false uh, promise. At every point, point, he warned us that troubles would follow our path and that obedience to him would, would actually increase our persecution and increase uh, spiritual attacks in our life. But he is the one that said once again, in this world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but I, I shout amen on that. Because I see everything as it has grown in my entire lifetime and things I've seen of the sin problem that is growing and, and, and getting to a, a place beyond what we could have ever thought. But God said, if you'll know the truth, the truth will set you free. And when God makes a promise, it is our rock. Jesus comforts us with this promise. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. That where I am there, you may be also. Let me tell you, he still reigns. He still speaks. And his word still offers the provision for every need we have in such a time as this. And so Timothy, under the, uh, Paul under the anointing of God, when he spoke uh, and sent his letter to Timothy, he said, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. That, that phrase, I charge you, it's used on six other occasions in Scripture. And it always precedes a clear and urgent command. It tells us, listen carefully. This is life and death stuff. Let me tell you, listen carefully. I charge you, Paul says, be on your guard. We live in an age of of thousands of competing voices all designed to scratch the itching ears of a directionless society. And people by the droves are, in, are, are inventing new religions by the day and new ways. Well, this is a way we're all going to get to Jesus. Let me tell you, that's false theology because Jesus said in his word that the only way to the Father, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Let me tell you, this world is not going to get any better on its own. It's only through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when we're trying to figure out how on earth we can live with confidence in this crazy, chaotic world, we ought to be running to the Bible, not away from the Bible, as so many are doing. Get back to the truth, and the truth will set you free. You can be assured of this through everything, and though everything else may fail us, God's Word never will. Because let me tell you, as God's Word says, His return, Christ's return, is the only hope this world has. It's the only hope we have. Titus 2.13 and 14, Paul said, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. I love Revelation 21, verses 3, 4 through 5. It says, when we get to heaven, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death and no more mourning and no more crying and no more pain for the old order of things has passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Wow. Somebody just say, wow. (laughs) Old things will be passed away. No more crying, no more death, no more division, no more demonic attacks. I want you to imagine something with me. 
I want you to think about what, what it is that bothers you right now in this world. What has been troubling to you? What is it that is hurting you today, physically, spiritually, emotionally, socially, whatever it is? One day, there will be no more racial prejudice, prejudice and division. One day, no more sin of any kind. No more darkness. No more sickness. Some of you, you may have headaches right now. No more. No more sickness. Some of you, your back aches. I know, Dennis, you're dealing with your shoulder. No more shoulder aches in heaven. Some of you have arthritis. No ever again. No more again. Some of you, some of you today have any type of sickness, whatever it may be. But the Bible says it's going to pass away. Meaning you right now, you may have anxiety and you're worried. You're tense. You're, you've got stress about your job and, or your finances or the economy or your family or your marriage or your country, the racial injustice and the prejudice. And let me tell you, one day, no more. It's going to be passed away. You've ever lost somebody that you love, such as probably most of us have, and you know the pain that goes with that, even as Elaine has shared with us, uh, even today, a loss of a nephew and their family. The pain that goes with that, or you're worried about losing someone, but one day, no more death ever again. For those of you who are hurt and you've been burned by somebody and, and you find it difficult to trust someone again, there will be no more sin in relationships. You will know and you will be known and you will share your heart and you will be loved intimately and uh, uh, with the love of God. Think about the world. Think about the new heavens and the new earth. No more poverty. No more kids dying today because they lack nourishment. No more disease. No more death. No more cancer. No more heart disease. No more coronavirus. Come on, somebody shout. Imagine a world. Imagine a world with all of this gone. And think about it. Every tear you've ever shed, for whatever reason, God himself will comfort you and he will personally wipe away every tear how many is ready to go? Oh, dear Jesus, come quickly, Lord Jesus. You need to know the times and seasons. You need to know and stand on the Word of God. But lastly, you need to know your destination. Heaven or hell, there is no other. It's real. Heaven is just as, hell is just as real as heaven. What will happen to you when you die, contrary to what some atheist or what somebody agnostic or what somebody else has said that even recently we've heard people that we even were singing in a Christian uh, uh, a group, a Christian band has said, well, I don't believe in God anymore. <laughs> Contrary to what everybody in this world that says there is no God and when you die, you, that's it. Let me tell you, there will be a day coming when the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. And so shall we ever be with the Lord what will happen to you when you die? Spiritual life or eternal life or eternal death? The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. I've been a part of many missions trips, and one of the things you have to have when you go out of this country is a passport. And you have to have a passport to get in to a country and to get out and to get back into our country, the United States of America. I love this country, and I love every country I've gone to and those I've not been able to go to. But a passport is so important. You have to have that. It, it tells who you are and where you belong. Uh, and when we go on these mission trips, their passports are taken up and locked away because many want to come back, would like to come to the United States of America. And so we don't want them stolen or misplaced. And so every time we come back in the United States, we have to share our, show our passport and they, they check us out and run it through and then they stamp it and they say, welcome back. <laughs> oh, I love hearing those words. Welcome back to this country. Welcome back to the United States of America. Well, let me tell you, as much as I love this place, this is not my home. I'm only passing through. My passport that matters more than my passport of the United States of America is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is my passport to the country called heaven. That personal, that, that glorious abode that we'll have with Jesus Christ. And one day we will hear those words when we are raptured and coming to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord. See, as Christians, we are on a journey. What journey are you on? Are you on a journey to heaven? Or are you on a journey to hell? It's your choice. Where's your commitment today? 
Have you asked Jesus to come into your heart and make him the Lord of your life? You can't just live any way you want to live. The Bible says, come out from among them, be separate, saith the Lord. Scripture still teaches a life of holiness, a life of sacrifice unto the Lord, giving ourselves completely to him. Oh, no, I know we're not perfect and his grace is perfect. But it says if we sin, he is faithful and just if we confess it to him to cleanse us of our sins. We can't live any way we want to. We've come out of this world system. And our home is not this world. Our home is in heaven, the abode of God. Our names are written in heaven's directory. Our lives are guided by heavenly standards. And our rights and inheritances are reserved in heaven. And our hope is directed there. Let me tell you, we have hope that is based not on this world. What are you looking at today? Are you getting your cues from this world? Are you getting your cues from this book and the Holy Spirit that dwells in us? Oh, let Him comfort you today. I want to comfort you today to know that this is not all there is. There is a time coming and everything will be made right when Jesus Christ will come. Let me tell you, the Prince of Peace is getting ready to come. It's getting soon when God is going to say, Son, it's time. I'm getting ready to leave this world. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. You see, I want to challenge you. If all you see is what you see, then you've not seen what is there to be seen. Don't just look at what you see. Look at what your eyes in the physical realm can't see, but in the spiritual realm. Not the temporary, but the eternal that God has for you. Hebrews 6.19 says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Verse 18, once again, in 1 Thessalonians 4.18, it says, Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Verse 28 of Luke 21 says, When these things begin to take place, all these things that are happening, stand up and lift up your heads. Come on, stop looking down. Put that spiritual smile back on your face today. Stop worrying. Get rid of the anxiety through the power of the Holy Spirit. Get rid of the stress of the times. And put your trust in the Lord because He says, lift up your heads because your redemption draweth nigh. Our redemption, the coming of the Lord, it draws nigh. Rather than being terrified by what's happening in our world, we should stand with confidence knowing that our Messiah, Jesus, is coming soon. So, when you're wondering if the world has gotten the upper hand, remember, Christ has overcome the world, and in Him, so have you. So I tell you, life is short, eternity is long, sin will be judged, hell is certain, but heaven can be yours. Two things I close with. His coming can take place at any time. And not everybody, secondly, is going to be taken because there will be those that choose not to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It's your choice. Joshua said to the Israelites, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So know the times and seasons. Stand on the word and truth of God. And make yourself, thirdly, ready for the coming of the Lord because your destination is your choice. Your destination, and know it, heaven or hell. I pray you choose heaven. May you be rapture ready. I want to pray for you today. I, I'm, I'm convinced there may be people watching that do not know the Lord and is not rapture ready. You may be wondering, I don't even know if I'm saved or not. I don't want to be left behind. I don't think anybody in the right mind wants to be left behind and face the eternal damnation and the judgment of God. Let me tell you, God will righteously judge a sin-filled world, but he's made a way possible and your sins to be judged on the cross. That's called grace and mercy. Today, would you receive that? 
I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, and, and it's, this is real. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, would you pray this prayer with me? Oh, you've got to do more than just pray this prayer. You've got to believe what you're praying. And would you ask Jesus into your heart, forgive your sin, repent before him, and he'll come in, and you'll be ready, and your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Come on, pray with me. Dear Jesus, come on, everybody pray this. Dear Jesus, I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I am so sorry for my sins. I repent of every one of them. I turn from them. And I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to come into my life to be my Lord and Savior. And from this moment on, I will live for you. Thank you for loving me. And thank you that right now, my name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. And I am rapture ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Are you rapture ready? Come on, live like it. Live like this home is not where we're stopping at. We're just passing through. God's coming. Let's be ready. I love you today. I can't wait to see you next Sunday morning. I can't wait to, I know you've seen me for every Sunday the past two and a half months roughly. But next Sunday, we're going to see each other. But more than anything, we're going to see Jesus together in and everyone. And one day soon, we're going to see him face to face. Have an incredible day. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. May you feel his presence. May he guide you through these troublesome times because he has taken us to another place called heaven. Have a Jesus-filled day. God bless you.